as Israel considers then how to respond to Iran's attack. Other countries in the region calling for restraint, as Nick said, on both sides. Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri spoke with his counterparts in Iran and Israel on Sunday, warning any further escalation could destabilize the Middle East even more. The Saudi Foreign Ministry issued a statement expressing concerns over, and I quote here, any potential severe repercussions. In a social media post, the ministry called on the UN Security Council to step up and manage the situation given the threat to international peace and security. It's that international peace and security which, of course, sits at the heart of the UN Security Council's mandate. Officials here in the UAE responded as well. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a statement in the wake of the attacks saying it called for resolving differences through dialogue and through diplomatic channels. Well, to discuss this further, uh, I'm joined by Amjad Taha, author of The Deception of the Arab Spring. He's a politi political strategist and analyst, as well as CEO of the Europost Agency. Amjad, it's good to have you. Um, this is a climate where, as far as the UAE is concerned, there needs to be um, a real ratcheting up of diplomatic efforts and dialogue to ensure that this thing doesn't spiral out of control. Um, you are well uh, versed in, in, in the UAE's perspective on what is going on here around the Middle East. Just explain the, the view um, from the UAE, if you will. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I think the escalation is, is requested and is required. And the fact that through dialogue and through diplomacy, there is a lot of challenges can be overcome. Uh, that, that's, that is the pathology and that is the path when it comes to UAE. But however, the escalation has been understood that the United States of America need to get more involved. In the Middle East, uh, China is not the solution. India is not the solution. The United States of America has more solutions in, to put on a table when it comes to uh, the Middle East. The fact that at one point, the United States of America decided by Biden administration to be away from the Middle East, I think it, it wasn't the best choice. So mm. they need to be more or into the Middle East, keep an eye, an eye on the Middle East and bring a more solution when it comes to radicalism, it's bring even more solution when it comes to the Iranian regime. I mean, Iranian regime complaining about what happened between them and the Israelis when they when there was an attack uh, next to their uh, next to the embassy of Iran in Damascus. But then Iran also attacked the Saudi embassy. We, we all remember that. And we Iran also attacked the Britain embassy. Mm. And we all understand and we didn't see Saudi declaring war, nor Britain declaring war on Iran. But the best solution here is that the United States of America is the solution. One, two, they can bring a lot on the table. The fact that they need to send a strong and firm message to the Iranian. Iranian last night when they attacked Israel, we see in the Middle East almost they came together. And this, uh, uh, the, the greatest message we heard, and it was very crystal clear, it was from Jordan, that our sovereignty is more important important, that our nation is more important, that we got to protect our nation, we got to protect our borders, we got to protect the right of defending ourselves. We There was a breach of international law when Iran launches its rockets from Iran, but it crosses all those countries. All those oh. countries, they had to close their airspace, they had to stop their businesses and so on. And that is a war, not on Israel, but in the whole Middle East. So what Iran wants to have a war. Yeah. Well, and when those rockets they dropped in Jordan Street, they dropped in Syria, they dropped in Iraq, all those countries were suffering from Iranian rockets, including a baby, a Bedouin, Muslim, Arab baby, as mm. well, a child, seven years old girl in Israel. Yeah. Like a, all the way there, she was targeted by a rocket. I don't think, and I, I, I don't think anyone from our audience believed that baby had anything to do with any battlefield in the region. And the question is this, yeah. did Iran do this for Gaza or for their interest? That is that is a question. But because Amjad, Iran says, this is, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Let, let, me, let me put this to you. Uh, the, the, you've got a very interesting perspective here. Um, talking about the importance of US um, interest, if not military involvement, 
uh, in the Middle East. And as you rightly point out, at the beginning of this um, Biden administration, we saw what was perceived to be a waning of interest in, in, in this region, with a focus much more squarely uh, on Asia and, uh, and China and, and deterrence uh, against China, both politically and economically. Um, the Abraham Accords sit at the heart of the U.S. administration's um, Middle East pillar. The Abraham Accords uh, designed by uh, their architects to introduce uh, and involve Israel in a, in a wider Middle East for, uh, as far as the architects of those accords are concerned, a more peaceful Middle East going forward. Now, there have been charges that the Abraham Accords, uh, certainly during this last uh, six months, as we've seen the conflict in Gaza ratchet up, are the Abraham Accords really um, the vehicle um, to promote peace and stability and de-escalation around this region? The UAE will very specifically say the answer to that is yes. Uh, these are strategic and long-term. And we see uh, the interest by the Saudis, for example, of normalizing relations as well uh, with Israel going forward, as long as there is a Palestinian horizon um, established. Iran sees these Abraham Accords as introducing Israel into a region uh, it, it doesn't want to see um, happen. What's your sense as to the um, longevity of these accords as a vehicle to promote peace going forward. Certainly the Iranians don't want sure. to see this increased involvement by Israel. Your sense? Well, well clearly, Iranians, they, they don't want to see that uh, happening, absolutely. But when it comes to the Abrahamic mm. Accord, if it wasn't for the Abrahamic Accord, we would have not uh, been able to send tons of food, tons of aids to the, to the people of the Gaza. So because we utilise mm. the Abrahamic Accord, we were able to build that humanitarian corridor. Yes, with all the atrocities happening, but there's still there is a hope. In the dark darkness, we can be the light. That's one side. Um, when it came to the G20, and this is, was, I think, the, it was the main important thing that changed everything. In G20, uh, Biden administration put on the table and they said that corridor from India, the, the economical uh, corridor or the train of economy, let's call it in the best way of putting it, uh, that starts from India, comes through the Gulf, Saudi, UAE, and it goes all the way to Israel, passing Palestinian states itself in the future. That would have meant mm. that all these nations are a strong nation, and also that Iran can no longer use Hormuz or use the uh, the red the the Red Sea to 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 uh, to you know uh, provoke nations or stop nations from trading as they are doing using the Red Sea and the Hormuz right now. That to the Iranian meant mm. to put a stop for it. That's when the seventh of October happened. But the question is this. The fact that we went for the Abrahamic Accord, a lot of countries joined and it was really hard. And you know that in, in the Middle East, for you to normalize with Israel, it's a really challenging thing to do. But we went and we did it and it was a brave move from our leadership. The next step was from United States of America as Biden administration came into power. They didn't reward the Abrahamic Accord. In fact, they rewarded the Iranians, which is the other side, which is anti-Semite regime that does not support any peace. It was rewarded with six billion release of money that goes to the Iranian bank in exchange for five American prisoners. And guess who took the wrong signal for that? Hamas. They thought, OK, we take 200 instead. That signal is not the best and it might send the wrong signal to the to the alliance of the United States of America that is not very reliable we know it is but it sends the wrong message even if you if the Biden administration right. meant something else but one thing we know one of the main solution for discalation one of the main solution for peace is a strong America and a strong present America in the Middle East not anyone else I'm Jad it's good to have you Thank you very much indeed for joining the uh, perspective there uh, from um, Amjad Taha, political analyst, um, UAE um, based, uh, but today uh, stateside for you. Thank you.